Good afternoon, my dear friends. Myself, Dr. Nathan Krishnan, Assistant Professor, Department of Rognitana, Faculty of Ayurveda, FGT University, Gurugram. Today we will be talking about the topic, the concept of Lena Dosha. The ancient science of Ayurveda revolves around very realistic concepts such as Panchamahapudas, Tridoshas, Saptadadus and Trimalas. For a precise comprehension of the science, basic principles has to be understood. Apart from these basic principles that sustain life in balance and paint morbidity under imbalance, there are very beautiful concepts that are responsible for the manifestation of the disease. One among the least focused or discussed is the concept of Lena Dosha. So in this context, you should know what exactly is the term Lena. Literally speaking, the term Lena refers to concealed or secluded. Technically speaking, it refers to merged, attached or concealed. So the definition of Lena Dosha Avastha can be understood as a state in which the doshas are strongly attached or adhered or merged to that of the dhadus. To state the qualities of Lena Dosha, we can understand the first one is the Egadesha Stidatva that is specifically located in a site, Anutva that is the subtle manifestation and Dadvandara that is merged strongly with that of the dhadus. Ayurveda literature quotes the term Lena in different context. First one is in the context of Vishamajwara, next in the context of Shwasa, Grahani, Vilambika and finally Apasmara. In our daily clinical practice, the term Lena Dosha can be understood in various spectrum of disorders. It can be understood based on the remission as well as the relapse. So now we will be moving on to the importance of studying the concept of Lena Dosha. So what is the importance of learning Lena Dosha Avastha in the daily clinical practice? So the Ayurveda literature has very beautifully mentioned Sarvadehe Pravisridan Saman Doshanna Nirharet Lena Dadushu Anutklishtan Falat Amad Rasaniva Ashrayasihi Nashaya Te Sihu Dur Nirharatvadaha So one should not remove Dosha from the body Doshat Nanurharet. When it is in the Sama Dosha Avastha and is strongly attached to that of the Dadus, that is nothing but the Lena Dosha Avastha. If the attempt has been made, the fate is similar to that of the unripe mango that has been taken for extracting its juice, there is total destruction of the body. Hence, Ayurveda literature precisely mentions. Tani upastida doshanam sneha sveta upapatanehi panchakarmani kurveda matra kalo vijarayan. So it is very clearly told you have to perform panchakarma therapy, but only after performing the preoperative techniques or purva karma, that is the snehana and svetana, respecting the matra and kala and giving importance to the roga as well as Rogi Bella. Now we will be moving on to the potential etiologies that are going to instigate this Lena Dosha. So to precisely mention the etiology of the Lena Dosha, we can tell first one is the Mithyobhajara that is the abnormal or following of inappropriate treatment procedures. Second one is nothing but the Swapava of the Vyadi or the nature of the disease. Third one is nothing but the Nidana or etiology itself. And the last one is abstinence from treatment of a specific or particular disease. So in the context of Vishama Jwara, Acharya has mentioned whenever the, there is remission of Vishama Jwara and the patient is partaking Mitya Ahara Viharas, there is a decline in the Bela or Vyadik Shamatva. So whenever there is a favorable atmosphere, the doshas undergo Dushti or Prakoba and the end result is nothing but the relapse or the reoccurrence of that particular Vishamajwara. Similarly, in the context of Shwasa, it is very beautifully told if the treatment of Shwasa has to be done in Bahudosha Avastha, where the Dosha Dushti is severe, 
initially shodhana has to be performed after shodhana it should be followed by shamana so shodhana is nothing but the purificatory therapy shamana is nothing but the palliative therapy if the shamana or palliative therapy that is the dupana is skipped by the clinician there will be existence of shesha doshas that are the doshas that are residing after this particular shodhana or purificatory therapy and these shesha doshas will be merging strongly to that of the dadus and it will be converting to the lena dosha avastha hence there is a chance of reoccurrence of the shwasa roga or respiratory disorders in the next example ajare tells regarding the disease of grahani so in the disease of grahani there is agni mandya that is the poor digestive fire and this agni mandya result into the formation of ama and the ama in conjunction with that of the dosha forms the sama dosha avastha and the sama dosha avastha turns on to lena dosha avastha where there can be recurrence of this particular disease or grahani which in contemporary science is understood as irritable bowel syndrome next in the context of abhasmara it is very interesting to discuss there is recurrent or intermittent epileptic seizures so here the term lena has been understood with reference to the attack the frequency of attack so lena dosha can be understood in two ways first one is with reference to the dosha avastha in case of grahani in case of vilambika in case of vishamajwara and in case of shwasa whereas in case of abhasmara the lena the term lena refers to the vega avastha so lena can be understood as dosha avastha lena can be understood as the vega avastha so what is the contemporary understanding of this particular lena dosha concept many diseases can be understood with reference to that of the concept of lena dosha for example acquired immunodeficiency syndrome aids filariasis leprosy herpes zoster herpes simplex and so on so for time being we will be explaining malaria with reference to the concept of lena dosha the vector that is responsible for spreading this particular disease malaria is nothing but the female anopheles mosquitoes so the plasmodial sporocyte that is present in the salivary gland of this female anopheles mosquitoes will be injecting it onto the human body it will be shifting on to the blood stream ultimately it will be reaching into the liver and the fundamental unit of liver we call it as the liver cells that is the hepatocytes and this is nothing but the pre erythrocytic schizogony or myrogony stage in that particular stage there is proliferation of this particular plasmodial sporocyte that is going to happen once there is proliferation the hepatocytes will be swollen up finally it will be bursting and this particular myrocytes will be released on to the systemic circulation and once it is into the systemic circulation it moves on to the rbcs or red blood corpuscles or the erythrocytes and in in that particular rbc in that particular structure it divides 8 to 20 times and when it reaches a number of 50 plasmodial sporocytes or 50 organisms per each microliter of the blood there is clinical manifestation of malaria that is going to happen but in all the cases there may not be proliferation of plasmodial sporocyte in the hepatocyte or in the liver cell there can be in a stage of dormancy or inactive phase it is called as the hypnocytes or the dormant form this is nothing but something similar to that of the good old concept that is told in ayurveda 5000 years before that is nothing but the lena dosha avastha now we will be moving on to the understanding of the term latency and lena dosha the term latency can be defined as a state of seeming inactivity or a state of existence but a state of absolute non manifestation or absolute absence of manifestation here the term anutklishta the quality of uh, quality of lena dosha that is nothing but anutklishta avastha can be understood with reference to the term latency 
where anutklishta avastha is nothing but there is no signs and symptoms which is in a perceivable level. So, this is nothing but the comparison of the term latency with that of the concept lena dosha. The term shlishta here refers to the strong adherence or attachment of this particular dosha to that of the dadus. So, this is what you should understand with reference to the term latency and lena dosha. Now, we should understand the impact of lena dosha in Vyadikshamatva. In the context of Punaravarta Gajwara, Ajarya have told whenever there is a decline in Vela, there is a relapse of the fever that is going to happen. So, taking on to that concept of Bela or Vyadikshamatva, we can understand many diseases that is told in the modern science with reference to the Lena Dosha Avastha. First one is with reference to the herpes zoster. So, the virus that is causing the herpes zoster is still present in the body even though the disease is subsided. The reactivation or relapse of that particular disease is not clearly known, the mechanism is poorly understood. So, that particular stage of latency is nothing but Lena Dosha Avastha. When you take the disease of acquired immunodeficiency syndrome that is caused by human immunodeficiency virus, there is a specific phase called as the latent phase. It can last up to 10 years or it can even go more than 10 years and it depends upon the extent of strength of the immunity that is possessed by that particular patient. So, this is also a nothing but the concept of lena dosha avastha a stage of latency. So, any number of diseases can be mentioned from the contemporary science with reference to that of the lena dosha avastha. Finally, we will be moving on to the incidence and clinical discernment of lena dosha avastha. So, how we can understand lena dosha avastha in a clinical setup when a patient is coming to a clinic how we are going to tell this particular disease or pathogenesis is in lena dosha avastha. So, this can be told in a very simplistic way whenever there is a, a relapse that is caused by the same disease that was previously treated then you have to assume that it is nothing but a lena dosha avastha. The doshas has not been properly removed from the body or the Vyadikshamatva or Vela has been declined. Then what is the incidence of this Lena Dosha? Lena Dosha can happen before treatment as well as after treatment. Before treatment Lena Dosha can happen with reference to that of the Sama Doshas that is whenever there is Akne Madhya there is formation of Ama and the Ama that has been formed will be merged with that of the doshas that forms the sama dosha or is associated with that of the doshas and these sama doshas when it gets attached to that of the dadus it converts into lena dosha avastha. So, this is nothing but the incidence of lena dosha before treatment. Next coming on to the incidence of lena dosha after treatment of the disease. We have already quoted the treatment of shwasaroga that is in bahu dosha avastha. So, whenever there is bahu dosha avastha shodhana has to be performed it should be followed by shamana this we have already told. If that particular shamana has been skipped by the clinician then there is shesha dosha avastha that is residual doshas are still existing in the body. So, these shesha doshas will convert into lena dosha by getting strongly attached to that of the dadus. So, lena dosha can happen before the treatment that is in the form of sama dosha and after treatment that is nothing in the form of shesha doshas. So, this is with reference to incidence of lena dosha and with reference to the clinical understanding whenever there is a remission and relapse of a disease we should understand it is nothing but the lena dosha that is behind this particular pathogenesis. And the Ayurveda literature has beautifully told how to tackle this particular situation also. You have to go for Dibana and Pajana, you have to go for Dibana and Pajana whenever performing that particular Shodhana therapy. So, Dibana and Pajana has to be done before Shodhana or Purificatory therapy. 
If I tell Jeevana Pajana, then I have to add Shodhana Anga Snehana and Shodhana Anga Swedana also has to be performed for doing this particular Shodhana. And after Shodhana, it has to be followed by Shamana therapy that is nothing but the palliative care. Then what you have to do? The last is nothing but the Rasayana. So, this is the treatment protocol that has to be followed. So, Dibana and Pajana, Shodhana Anga Snehana and Shodhana Anga Swedana, then Shodhana, later it is nothing but the Shamana and finally the Rasayana therapy has to be followed. So, this is how you are going to tackle the Dina Dosha Avastha. Still, there is recurrence of the disease, then you should understand the treatment that you assumed that it is correctly done was not properly administered. Then again the treatment has to be done. So, this is with reference to the intervention of Lina Dosha Avastha. So, to conclude, Lina Dosha Avastha is nothing but a state of latency, a state of seeming inactivity, a state of existence with absolute non-manifestation or absolute absence of manifestation, where the doshas are strongly attached to that of the dhadus, where there is recurrence of the disease where the treatment has to be given in a systematic protocol. And the term Lina can be understood as Dosha Avastha, as we have already told with reference to that of the Shwasa, with reference to that of the Grahani, with reference to that of the Vishamajura. And the term Lina also can be understood with reference to that of Abhasmara, that is nothing but the Vega Avastha, the attack of that epilep epileptic seizures. So, for a non-futile treatment of a particular disease, a systematic protocol has to be followed in order to avoid the Lina Dosha that is coming from Shesha Doshas. And before treatment, a proper Devana Pajana has to be given so that to avoid Sama Doshas leading to the Lina Doshas. Thank you.